You're listening to Critical Mass Radio. Now it's our turn. Well, good evening, world, and yes, always look on the bright side of life. And uh, you're listening to the Changing Consciousness Show, coming to you from Bolton in Greater Manchester. And this evening, we are going to listen to voices of some ordinary people on the streets of Northwest England. Yes, this is going around the world, but here we are in good old Blythe with its rain and its cold, but that's why we always have to look on the bright side of life. And this evening, for your entertainment and for hopefully for listening and maybe giving you some room for thought, we're going to, first of all, Listen, our first interview will be with Asad. Asad is a Muslim guy who owns the Computer Zone shop in, Bright- in Bolton. I popped in to see Asad when I had some difficulty with my computer, and he sorted it out for me. Uh, and while I was there, I said, by the way, I do a program, and uh, I'd like to have some views from you. And he agreed to do that. And then when I was on my way back home, I met a group group of uh, youth workers. They were traveling on the bus. I was catching a bus from Bolton to Little Lever. They were young people on a gap year, having got their degrees from university and doing one year's voluntary work with Zach's in Farnworth. There'll be more about that later on in the show. <clears throat> It's good to know that young people are still out and trying to do something about the world they live in. Well, after meeting with the guys from Zach's, then on Sunday I went to the Manchester Xboxes meeting. I'm the chaplain there. And I met four guys, three Xboxes professionals and um, a professional photographer and after the uh, we have a monthly meeting there at uh, Manchester Xboxes at the Derby Brewery Arms in Manchester so if you're ever around there on the first Sunday of the month pop in have a drink uh, and 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 join the Xboxes even if you're not an Xboxer yourself but you'll always be made welcome if you want to watch, look on, uh, check them out, go on to the website, which is manchesterxboxes.co.uk. That's manchesterxboxes.co.uk. Now, the media usually presents us with anxious voices, protesting in the streets, complaining, or crying out for reform and seeking change. And Thank God we've got people like that who are awake and want to see change and reform and do something about it. They actually get up and do something. We need people who are prepared to take risk and get involved to seek justice and peace for all people. Hang on, but it's also good to talk to some, sometimes to people who just go about the daily chores, doing their business and getting on with life. They too have something important to say, and we need to listen to them. They often feel useless and therefore carry on living life the best they can in the circumstances that they are in, and they're the unsung heroes of the world. And uh, they were talking and say, or singing, rather, about the voice of the future. So I hope in your hearts you can hear the voice of the future Moving you on. Welcome to all who are in chat room and those who are turning into www.criticalmassradio.uk.co.uk for the first time. Welcome. The Changing Consciousness Show looks at the changing concepts taking place in society. How people try to deal with prejudice, injustice, and other changes taking place in their lives. 
There are no easy answers or solutions, but we still need to be proactive. Listen to that voice in our hearts guiding us to the future, trying to discover ways to bring about change. Because if we don't do it, nobody else will. So if, you, uh, if you're not able to stay and listen to the full two-hour show, well, don't worry, because you can catch up tomorrow and see the, and hear the full program on our podcast. So if you go to www.criticalmassradio.co.uk or follow us on Facebook, you'll be able to hear all the presenters, all the programs which are going on. This evening, I'm doing something different. Well, I always do something different. We're going to listen to voices of ordinary people, those who get on with the daily chores of life. They're often the ones who are not approached to give their opinion. They're the quiet ones, ones who don't go out of their way to make their voices heard. I try to approach such people and engage with them, encouraging them to say a few words. And my first interview is with Assad. As I said, he owns the Computer Zone shop in Bolton. And before we hear his interview, we're first of all going to hear the station jingle, and then we'll go straight into hear what Assad has to say. I've uh, asked him about his views because he's a Muslim and we've heard of conspiracy theories and things like that. Well, I wanted to know what he felt like. And uh, anyway, station jingle first and then we'll go on to have the interview with Assad. Chemtrails, child, animal, and planet abuse. Geoengineering, alternative energy, disclosure, prison planet, Agenda 21, drones, biometrics. This is CMR, Critical Mass Radio, leading the way to stopping the control with proactive hosts, shows, and solutions, and informative groundbreaking guests. Critical Mass Radio, the People's Station. Now, it's our turn. Right, it's uh, the Boxing Vicar, and I'm in Bolton, yeah. and I'm in the Computer Zone shop. Is that what it's called? Yeah, Computer Zone, and okay. my name is Asad Rayman. Can you say that again? Asad Rayman. Um, do you have a faith, Asad? Yeah, I'm a Muslim, alhamdulillah. Okay. And I have a faith on Islam. H- how does that fit in being in Bolton? You know, in uh, most like Bolton, UK, you can say too many different nationalities, religious people living around here. So I'm not against that. Some are Christian, some are no other. If you first thing you have to be a good human being, then the religion came and then the other things, you know. So if you are not good as a human being, I don't think so. If you say I'm a Muslim, I'm a Christian, that doesn't matter for me. Yeah, personally, I think so. First of all, you have to be a good human person. Not, you know, you from your existence, nobody gets harmed. Things like that. If you are safe and just that's it. And different religions in this world, you know, you have. So I don't. I'm not after any religion. All they are good. They say same thing. Could could be a good human being. Everything so. It's different religion, so I'm with Islam now. Yeah. I said when I'm walking around, uh, not only around Bolton, but other places, uh, I hear about conspiracy theories and things like this. Do you feel that Islam is sometimes what's called demonized? No, it's all propaganda. It's, yeah, I, don't, I really <coughs> can't understand why this is all happening, you know. I don't know what kind of, like European American people, not people, 
people don't know anything. It's all about go uh, governments, you know, who are ruling the countries. They are going after Muslims. I don't know what's, what's their main aim to be there. Because you cannot win anything with fights. You cannot win going to war. And if you want to win people's heart, you have to be spread, you know, love things around them. Treat them like a, you treat your own people. Then I don't think so there will be any war, any, you know, conflicts in the world if you are dealing fairly to every religion, every person, you know. So everything goes wrong when you are dealing one person differently, another person differently, then all things, you know, started from this thing. So overall, I, I, we can feel, see yeah, what's happening. A human a person, you know, normally 20 or older person can understand what's all happening. I don't think so even kids nowadays, you know, they realize what's going around, why they are doing this and no. I don't know, they just want to be keep quiet, but as a human being, as a Muslim, I know what's happening. So I know why they're going after the Muslims, you know, why they are doing all this. So yeah, it's a little bit hard to explain, but I know what's going on. You seem, looking at you, you seem quite an honest man. You've got an honest face. It's very open. Yeah. Uh, and I've walked into your shop, and you're happy to, to talk to me openly. Yep. Uh, and and that's really encouraging because that's and the things you're saying about love and care uh, that is for me exactly how human beings should be. Yeah. So what do you think prevents us from doing that? In, if you are living in a society, there are few you can say out of hundred, you know, three percent, not even three one percent, people are you know racist things like that. Ninety nine point nine percent are fair. Like I'm living in. Bolton last some 10, 12 years. I've never such kind of a problem like racism. I never see anything. I never heard, you know, a newspaper I'm reading, I'm looking, watching with the telly. Uh, but personally, I didn't have in any kind of this problem in this country so far. So that's why I'm, I'm really satisfied with, you know, living around here. And uh, I don't feel anything that I'm living out of my country or not uh, with different culture, different people. But that, if you are satisfied, that's the main thing. I'm, I'm living here. I'm satisfied. I'm doing my business. I'm working, enjoying my work. I have too many English friends, Christian friends, Jews friends. So we do, I don't think so. Uh, all this started thing, you know, the upper level. Yes. Down, you know, people on the down level, they don't know nothing. They just want to be a simple. They, they are just simple people. They just want to be earn money for their livings. They don't bother what's happening around them. They don't want to go in racism. They don't want to go Islam. They don't want to go Muslims. It's all, you know, top cream of the, you know, world. They are doing all this because they want to create conflicts and they get their advantages from there. And we can stop them. Like, if you, if you heard just a few days ago, they released, a, you know, movies again, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, yeah. And what's the purpose for that? To make, to make Muslims angry and they will go after them like American and attack on them some kind of terrorist and they say terrorist activities who are going to promote them all these kind of acts going to promote them so uh, even now they are saying no we don't take responsibility something going wrong to your country you are responsible you have to stop them you cannot say that there's a freedom of speech you can say anything that's not I don't understand with this so if you control such kind of thing you know don't go against any religion they are you know uh, prophets things like that don't blame them don't make such kind of you know bad movies about them so that's the only way you can control them if you say freedom in the name of freedom of speech you can say anything and can make anything that's not fair so you feel a lot of the conflict is coming from above for power struggle somewhere else mm. and from what yes. I'm picking up from you is the people who are the people on the ground level are just having to get on with their lives yep. and get on with one another the best they can. Yeah, and they are really cooperative in daily life. I, know, I told you, I never had any kind of problem living in this country, not even single, you know, I, I can't remember. But there are few people, you know, like, same in Islam, few people are extremists and they blame all the Muslims, all the Islamic countries. It's not Lada. They, they, the people, they call terrorists, they maybe have some kind other ob objective to get. It's not related to Islam. They are not, you know, doing any good to Islam. All they are doing, they are making money due to some reason. I don't know why. Why they're killing people? They're getting funds from somewhere to support their whatever their purpose to aim behind this. 
But as a Muslim, you know, we're not allowed to kill any innocent person. Except, you know, that, that's a, it's a, if you have authority, you know, you can give sentence, you can say in the courts, take them in the court this way, you cannot kill a people, person straight away, that he is not obeying me or something like that. So that's totally wrong, I can say. Thank you for your time. This uh, hopefully this is going going all around the world. We'd never. I don't know who listens in, right. but it goes all around the world. So, what would you say to people in the world, whoever's listening? How would what kind of uh, uh, advice would you give them to live peacefully? Uh, yeah, I told you before that the living peacefully. You know that you have to be give respect and have respect, you know. You have to give respect, then you can expect respect from the other person. If you say, I'm a, I've got power, I don't respect your rules, your country, your sovereignty, everything, I don't want to be, and you say, other people will say to you, I respect you, it's not possible. In this world, 20th century, we're living, you know. So we have to be give respect and have respect. That if you apply this rule, I can still solve all the problems in the world. Thank you for your time. No problem. Thank you. If you give respect, you can expect respect. Well, um, thank you, Asad, for those words. And uh, yes, so where does all this problems come from? Is it the bottom or the top? Well, I suppose corruption is a major cause of poverty around the world. And it occurs at all levels of society, from local and national governments, civil society, the, the judiciary functions, large and small business, military and other sources. Hey, it's all over the world. And we needn't smile or criticize because I'm sure if we had an opportunity, we might, might also misuse power. Corruption affects the poorest the most. In rich or poor nations, all elements of society are, in, are affected in some way as corruption undermines political development, democracy, economic development, the environment, people's health, and so on. Poverty is the state for the majority of the world's people and nations. And why? Why is this? Is it enough to blame poor people for their own predicament? They should get up, get on their bikes and ride off somewhere? Are they lazy? Have they made poor decisions? And been, uh, are they solely responsible for their plight? What about their governments? Have they pursued policies that actually are harmful. Okay. I, I think these are questions which we all have to look at and, uh, in, and, and be responsible for. We all have to take responsibility. We're going to listen to some music now because this is, I think I pronounce his name correctly, Dawid, uh, Warnsbury, and it's the truth that lies inside. Most of us are looking for truth outside. I'm suggesting, why not try and look at the truth from inside? What's the truth inside us? Are we actually truthful? Are we honest people? You know, there are times where I may have to question myself, and I think we all do. Well, I wonder how many of us can actually show the truth that lies inside of us. We do try, and uh, maybe the more we try, the more we might achieve. Well, Dawid uh, also lectures internationally uh, at community events and universities. Uh, speaking on topics related to social, just, social justice, disability awareness, music, spirituality, philosophy, tradition, and ideology. 
And I think that song came from his heart, and I'm sure he, I think he wrote it himself. Well, if you have just joined us, you're listening to the Changing Consciousness show, and we've had an interview with Assad, who I met in a computer shop in Bolton, and he gave us some words of wis wisdom, basically uh, concluding with respect. Respect yourself and respect others, and I'm sure that will help the world to be a better place. Well, when I was on my way back home to Little Lever, Little Lever from Bolton, there were three young people uh, on the bus, two men and a woman, and they had a cross on the back of their clothes they were wearing. They looked like they had a kind of uniform on. We got off at the same bus stop, and I'm quite an inquisitive kind of fellow, and I usually have a tape recorder on me. So um, I asked them what they were doing, and they told me they were on a gap year. They were Christians doing voluntary work, helping out with Zach's. Now, Zach's is a Sycamore project um, which runs the Zach's Youth Bar. Uh, it's an independent Christian charity established in 1995. Uh, it took about four years of planning and vigorous fundraising before the project was able to purchase and refurbish a, dilapidate, a dilapidated wine bar near Farnworth Town Centre. Farnworth is just at the edge of Bolton. It's one of the poorest towns in the UK, believe it or not. There are plenty of pubs, but very few venues for teenagers to go and actually learn about life or enjoy themselves without drinking or taking drugs. Each year, there seem to be an ever-increasing number of youths simply hanging around on street corners. Many of the children were suffering from problems at home and had become easily lured into alcohol and drug abuse, antisocial behavior and petty crime. It was still and still is the desire of the project founders to provide a meeting place free from alcohol and other harmful influences, as well as promoting a safe and healthy lifestyle for children, for young people. Their plan uh, is devised to create a kind of cool place to hang out, to spend their leisure time and get help and advice in dealing with young problems, with young, with youth problems. Making the bars non-alcoholic evenings appealing for streetwise youths is quite a challenging thing, but it proved to be a great success. There's learning workshops, introducing kind of uh, help, understanding, managing issues like drinking, drugs, anger, sex, and so on. Um, so we'll be engaged and listening to these young people in a minute uh, as we um, go along in the show. But first of all, I'm going to put on some more music. It's nice to have a break in, uh, now and again. And it's Enigma. Why? Why is there war? Why is there conflict? Why is there all kinds of things? And maybe that's to do with the greed, with power, which we all yearn for in some way. So let's listen to uh, Enigma as the question, why? And I'm asking why I managed to switch that uh, song off for a couple of seconds there. 
And the answer is because uh, I did. <laughs> anyway, uh, back to Zach's. The work to establish a second venue for Zach's in nearby Little Lever uh, and purchasing a mobile bar to avoid street work began something like in 2007. Youth work in Little Lever has been taking place with a dedicated youth team who are who go along into the come along to the area and work with young people. Now we're going to listen to we're going to to, to listen to uh, the interview from Zach's. So let's get back to them. Right, it's Brian Branch, the Boxing Vicar. I've just been travelling on a bus from Bolton to Little Lever, where I live, and I met a group. Uh, now, can you just tell me who you are and tell me your names, please? Uh, my name's Stuart Samuels. Uh, I'm from Rackwith and I've been doing a gap year at Zax at the minute. My name's Alex, and I'm also doing the gap year at Zax, and I'm from Wales. My name's Safi, I'm also doing the gap year at Zax, and I'm from London. I'm Kate. I'm also, I'm also doing the gap year, and I'm from Macclesfield. Okay. Can you tell me something about what's going on? I've just nabbed you on the bus, and you're coming here to set up something. So, uh, today we're doing a, just a sports session. It's going to be for about an hour, and we're just going to be playing a bit of volleyball, uh, a bit of like coaching, and just have a bit of fun, basically. Uh, that's the session for today. Uh, I take it you are all Christians. Yes. Yeah, we're all Christians. Okay. How, how do you see, or see Christianity standing up in the changing values in society? I think Christianity is still as valid as it was however many years ago. Um, I think it's more important in some ways because it's actually, even if you don't feel that you can believe in a God of any description, it's still a really good way of living to live by. So, I've... Um I'm hoping this is recording because with the sun I can't really do a lot of checking. So it looks as though we are. And I'll there's a red light it. flashing. Yes, yeah, so that's good. Um, now, give me your name again. And uh, Safi. Okay. And what's your role in here? Um, well, we're all youth uh, youth workers. Uh, well, gap year youth workers at the moment. Um, we all get equal chances of planning sessions. Um, being leaders in certain activities and also mentoring like certain you know uh, young people so we get um, like on Fridays we get a one to one session where we just go one to one with a young person help them with their homework or any issues that they're that they're struggling with in you know in their life at the moment we just try and coach them well we know in society that it's changing a lot and uh, there's a lot of different theories around conspiracy theories uh, terrorist attacks and things like this. What does that mean to yourselves? Um, I find a lot of it to be pure rubbish. Uh, lack of understanding of different people, different cultures, different ways of life. Um, I really have no time for conspiracy theories myself. Any other thoughts? Um, well, terrorist attacks, I mean, these things can happen um, and there's not much that really I personally probably myself can do it. I, I mean a group of us probably could try and change but uh, well, I just work as like every day kind of thing so I within this Zax youth work I know that I'm going to make a difference in these kids lives so the stuff that we do every day you know they come here uh, and they come here they come to the Zax sessions because they enjoy it because they have fun they feel it's a safe place so that's that's the why I'm doing this gap year, you know, because I can tell that it's making a difference and I enjoy it. So um, anything else out of that is, you know, is kind of out of that control a bit. So it it's, it seems to be what I pick up on the ground level. It's uh, so who's putting out the hype? Do you think there's something to do with people who are in power and trying to frighten us, or what? I wouldn't say that they were trying to frighten us, but at the same time I think some of the security measures do get a little bit too much at various points, but they do drop them as well, they don't always keep them the same, so it's kind of hard to know really. My show just uh, 
deals with changing attitudes. Uh, it's not about pointing fingers or anything else like that, because I believe in the value that uh, if we if we love one another, but then that's so. Uh, it's used as such a kind of uh, throwaway thing. What do you mean by loving yourself? <laughs> um, well, it's loving yourself. I'd probably just uh, keep it in the heart that we've got to know that as Christians, we believe that God loves us. Um, we are special. God sent His only Son to die on the cross for us. So, you know, so He did that for every single one of us. I mean, He did it for all of us, but. He would have still done it if it was just the one person, if it was just me, or if it was just anyone else in this world. You know, God still would have sent His only Son to die on that cross for our sins. And I think that's where the emphasis kind of comes on that, you know, we've got to acknowledge that we are special, and, you know, in God's eyes, we ask everyone is special. So, yeah, God loves us and we've got to love ourselves. Yeah, that's good. That was a bit of a, a kind of devil's advocate question I throw in because. Uh I've been uh, ordained for 37 years and the, one of the things I have learnt in my latter life is that, as Jesus said, before you can love somebody else you have to love yourself. And often when I ask Christians that, they shy away because we don't know what that means. So it's, it's something where um, Jesus did speak a very good truth here because if we can't really love the false within ourselves, maybe we don't love the same false in our neighbours. Uh, mm -hmm. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Okay. So that's why I asked that question. Why do you do you love yourself? So it's not to be with vanity, not to be with self-love, but yeah. being kind to ourselves. Are you kind to yourself? Yeah, for the most part. Um, I'm realistic, though. So, I do pick up on my weaknesses, but I, they don't really bother me. They're just there, and I know they're there. Okay. Yeah, um, th that's what we have to deal with. I won't press you any further. What about you? Do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, I would say I'm probably fair to myself rather than kind to myself. Because, um, for example, if I, if I know I've done something wrong, then... I mean, I won't punish myself completely, but I know that I will kind of sanction myself in a way that that's fair to what I've done. Maybe you know, go and go away and think a bit. Like maybe give, not give myself what you know what I want at that time, and just use that that time to think about what I've done. You know, think about how I could probably repay you know repay what I've you know how I've done that, and maybe just talk to God for a little while. You know. In that spare time. I thank you for your time because I know you've got a set up. So before I go, what are you doing for the children? What are you setting up here? In this session, we're just setting up a, a volleyball court, and uh, we're going to be just playing a bit of uh, volleyball today. Um, and then later on today, we're going down to Kersby as well. So I've got another session over there, and um, we're just going to have some fun there. We're, um, for today, we've got plans um, teaching them some circus skills, and we're going to have some fun again. So. Um, playing on Diablo, spinning plates, stuff like that, so a lot of fun. And um, depending on who's leading it, those sessions, uh, it will be anything, so we'll do some arts and crafts stuff some other week. And it's like, again, like I said, it's depending on who's leading it, depends on what we do, because we're all, like, we all have our like different talents and skills and stuff like that. So, so like, me and myself, I've got like my little quirky circus skills that I can teach them, um, plus I'm very sporty, so a lot of my sessions, I, I run a lot of the sports sessions, but then we've got other people that are uh, really good with arts and crafts, or the people, uh, all, we all have different skills and abilities. So we're just trying to like, you know, make that fun for the kids and pass our skills on to the young people. So yeah, it's really good. Thank you for giving me your time. I'm going to ask you one more because this is going all around the world. What message have you got to give the world? At the end of the day, I think it comes down to just if you're feeling lonely or completely cut off, then there are actually people like ourselves who are here to work with you, to be with you and to spend time with you and show that actually people do care. Thank you. No worries.
Well, it's lovely that people do care. And uh, if you've just tuned in, you're listening to the Changing Consciousness show with me, Brian Branch, the boxing vicar. We've just uh, heard from some leaders, youth leaders, working with Zach's. If you want to see more about that, get onto the website. It's www.zaxbar, that's Z-A-C-S-B-A-R dot co dot U-K. I'll give that again, www.zaxbar, Z-A-C-S-B-A-R dot co dot U-K. Now, they are a voluntary organization. And if you're living nearby and you want to give a hand, well, look up the web address there and find out. Or if you are at a distance and want to support them, then I'm sure they'll be grateful for any uh, any contributions or gifts. So that that's uh, really good. It's good to see that young people are doing something. They don't get a good press often. We only get the press from people, young people who are going astray. We forget that there are a whole lot of people all around the world, young people, who actually care about the world they live in. And they are trying to do something about it. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. That was Libira, Deep Peace. Uh, it's an all-boy English vocal group directed by Robert Priceman. And most members come from the parish choir of St. Philip's Norbury in South London. Um, they've got a whole string of uh, songs out now. I think it's very, that they really are a good group. And it's nice to have something peaceful in a world which often seems chaotic uh, with so many unsolved problems uh, and tensions around. So it's nice to have something which leads us um, into a nice quiet time because as we are coming to this end we've just come up to an hour of the show it's just coming up to 10 o'clock so I'm just going to uh, give you some quotes now because it followed up from the uh, talk we had with the lads um, regarding loving yourself now this is Lucille Ball I have an everyday religion, she wrote, that works for me. Love yourself first and everything else falls into line. Now make of that what you will. Now Ho Chi Minh, believe it or not, said this many, many years ago. Love other human beings as you would love yourself. Familiar words, aren't they? Our remedies oft, often lies within ourselves, don't they? Okay, uh, this is what uh, Shakespeare says from All's Well That Ends Well. Our remedies often ourselves do lie, which we ascribe to heaven. Huh. And Paul Tillich, he said, the courage to be is the courage to accept oneself in spite of being unacceptable. Now, look, that is quite a, uh, something to think about. The courage to be is the courage to accept oneself in spite of being unacceptable. And again, in William Shakespeare, Measure for Measure, uh, this is what uh, was said. Our doubts are traitors. And make us lose the good we oft might win by fearing to attempt. Now, how many times have we in our lives, you in your life, actually been afraid to put a foot forward? Because you think somebody is going to cuff you one. You may have missed an opportunity because if you put your hand out to the stranger, instead of it being chopped off, they may have put their hand in yours. 
and introduce themselves. Our doubts are traitors and make us lose the good we oft might win by fearing to attempt. Okay, now on uh, the first Sunday in each month, the Manchester Xboxes Association meet in Derby Brewery Arms, Manchester. And uh, the my next interview comes from the lads from there. But before we do that, we're going to listen to Led Zeppelin, Stairway to Heaven. Um, it's nice to have a stairway to heaven. I think Jacob found a stairway to heaven. Uh, and let's see if Led Zeppelin can lead us in our thoughts and our hearts to discover a stairway to our heaven, that place we long for. This is uh, about eight minutes long, so if you want to have a nice break, a uh, cup of coffee, whatever you want, then this is the time to do it. So this is Led Zeppelin, Stairway to Heaven. Well, that was Led Zeppelin, Stairway to Heaven, uh, English rock band. That song was composed by guitarist Jimmy Page and vocalist Robert Plant for the band's fourth unnamed studio album. Um, I, I just like them. They're great. Okay, back to uh, the Manchester Xboxers Association is thought to be the oldest Xboxers members club in the British Isles. The Oldham, Ashton and Manchester Xboxers Association was established on the 24th of June, 1951. It was agreed the association would appropriate as a regular, would operate as a regular meeting place where ex-boxers, sometimes ex-opponents, could gather and talk about their favorite, favorite sport. Present at the initial gathering were ex-boxers such as Jock McAvoy, Great Boxer, Len Johnson, Tommy Shields, Len Steele, etc. Uh, by 1968, some new young blood had arrived at the club as members, uh, and the meeting was held in Smith, Smithfield Vaults, Swan Street, Manchester. I don't know if any one of you know that. Um, at that meeting, there was Jack Edwards, Sr., Jack Edwards, Jr., Vince Ford, Tommy Prophet. Tommy um, actually won uh, a gold medal. I, no, did he win a gold medal? I can't remember now, but he was in the Olympics many, many years ago. Jack Braddock, Arnold Brown, uh, and many others who were uh, ABA champions. By 1973, the association decided the club needed to be developed as it moved into modern times. And the club's aim and aspirations were basically what they do is they help ex-boxers, people who are in trouble. They help the, not only the boxer, but maybe the family. More than six years ago, um, the association... Uh, started providing a monthly meeting place for export boxers to talk about yesterday, their past, the current boxing scene, etc. And of course, they all now meet the first Sunday of the month in the uh, pub in, in, in Manchester. If you want to go onto the site, it's manchesterxboxers.co.uk. Manchesterxboxers, that's all one word, dot co.uk um, okay we're now going to uh, listen to an interview I had with some of the lads after the the meeting and I'm I'm their chaplain I go there uh, have a laugh have a joke uh, they're a great bunch of characters and here we are uh, the recording now is coming up at the Derby Brewery Arms, Manchester. And I've got four of the boxing characters. They're not all boxers, but they're people who've been interested in boxing. 
and we've got uh, Jerry McBride, who was a professional boxer, Lee Anderson, who's a professional photographer, Gavin Stirrup, who's a businessman and deals with Christmas decorations. Christmas decorations. I'm also an ex-professional boxer. Christmas decorations, also an ex-professional boxer. And John Green, who's the youngest of the group, uh, and he was uh, bantamweight. I'm going to turn to Jerry first. Uh, Jerry, how long, how many fights did you have? Professional, 54. 54 fights? Yeah. Okay, if I ask you to speak up for the... Yeah. Uh, and how many, of you, how many of those fights did you win? Uh, half. Half? 20, 23. So you weren't bad, you were yeah. pretty good. I've been a lot better if I didn't have the illness here at the beginning. What illness did you have? Uh, colitis. Ulcerated colitis and get rid of it. They didn't know what it was in them days. Okay. So that actually didn't help your no. professional career? No, it didn't. When did, your, when did, you, when did you have your last fight? Uh, 1975. And what do you do now, Jerry? I'm, I work every day, the weekend. I've got a bit of a pallet yard. I collect pallets, buy pallets, mostly collect them. Have you enjoyed your boxing life? Yeah, yeah, very, very, I, I loved it. So when people turn around and say that boxing should be banned, what would you say? No, so I don't think so, because it, it, it keeps, keeps young kids off the streets and it keeps people out of trouble. You young kids, I think. Well, they, they just, all the boxers I know, they've all been very, very friendly. And, uh, and that's it. They, they, it's, a, it's a very friendly sport. It's an hard sport, but very friendly. All the people are friendly. They were know all down London, the Midlands, Scotland, Northern, Northern Ireland. All, all good people. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, I'm going to come to you now, Lee. It's the first time I've met you. Could you tell me something about yourself? <coughs> yeah, well, I'm a um, professional photographer, uh, a boxing fan, um, and I've, I've come to this meeting today. Uh, I came across the website of the Manchester Ex Boxers Association, and I read some of the stories on there, some of the sort of retired boxers uh, and characters that, that come here, and just was fascinated by it, really. So. I sort of got in touch with the association through Gavin Stirrup and uh, arranged to come along and do some portraits of some of the Xboxes uh, with a view to producing a photography book. Uh, it's just a personal project really, but yeah. So do you hope to publish that? Yeah, I mean I'll, I'll self-publish it myself to start with and, um, and then we'll see, how, we'll see where we go from there with it really. What made you get interested in boxing? Um, I did a, a little bit of boxing when I was younger. I, I wasn't particularly great at it, to be honest. Um, so, I, I, but you know, I, I enjoyed it, uh, and I, I just think it's just my favourite sport, really. You know, it's, yeah. Gavin, now you did box professionally. How many fights did you have? Uh, I had 18 as a professional, and and I also had uh, about 90 fights as an amateur. Did you? It's yeah. quite a lot. Yeah. When did you start your amateur? When I was 12. In uh, North Manchester. What was the name of the club? Bullshaw Amateur Boxing Club. Is it still going? Yeah, it is, yeah. yeah. Do you um, actually go and visit? No, I don't, I don't live in that area now. I live in South Manchester now, so uh, no, I don't go over there. It's, um, I just don't go over that way, really. I have no real, real links up there. So, no, I don't go. How far did you get in the professional game? Um, how far did I get? Uh, boxed, um, boxed a world champion. Did you? Um, yeah, Who was that? Um, Sugar Boy Malinga boxed him in South Africa. Uh, went to Australia. I, I had uh, three fights in Australia. Went there for one and stayed on. And, uh, yeah, three fights there. Uh, boxed an eliminator for the British title. Got beat. Yeah, I had 18 fights and won, won 15 and lost two. So you're quite good. Three one. You're quite good in your time and. Uh, not as good as well. Good enough, obviously, because I didn't, didn't, didn't win anything. But um, when I got beaten, when I boxed a world champion, I got beat. So, uh, but I was okay, I suppose. It was, uh, you know, I, I won more than I lost, and 
and, and I, uh, I enjoyed boxing. It was, uh, it was good for me. It was good for me as a as a person. It made me the man I am today. I think you know. Does it help in your business? Absolutely, yeah. In what yeah. way? Well, I don't know. It's just my attitude because I, because of all, I always box from being from being a young man, from being twelve and at that age. Uh, uh, I had a lot of aggression inside me, uh, and uh, I used to I used to like fighting. And my dad sent me to the boxing club, and um, it was like legal fighting, you know. And, uh, but it's also a way of channeling my energy into something rather than running off, you know, just fighting on the streets and stuff. And it taught me respect for people, and uh, you know, and, and rules. You know, I, uh, my trainer was a guy called Jeff Shaw, who, who was also a member of the Manchester Ex Boxers Association, and. Uh, he was a very hard taskmaster. He, he was a an ex professional, and uh, you know he didn't take no messing. You know it was a case of you do as I say, and and we always did as he said. And uh, but he was a good man as well. You know he was uh, he had good morals, and and I was sort of brought up with him really. I spent a lot of time with him, and, and I looked up to him greatly, and I still do, still admire him to this day. And uh, and uh, yeah, so I, it just got me sort of on the straight and narrow, if you like. And, What's your business? What do you do? We support. I'm a I'm a builder by trade, but um, when, when the world ended in 2008, when there was a recession, we went. We, we got involved in a, a lighting business, a Christmas lighting business, which has developed um, dramatically really over the past few years. And that we do, uh, we install, we, we rent Christmas lights and decorations to hotels and restaurants and. Uh, some uh, domestic residential customers. We do a few footballers, uh, Manchester United footballers. We do the Hilton in Manchester, the Midlands, Piccadilly, and restaurants all around the Manchester area. So it's a, it's a thriving business, and and the the best part of it is we only work once a year. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good sense of humour. Boxers usually have a good sense of humour. I'm coming to the uh, the youngest member of. It's not that young. You know. Oh, yeah. come on. Oh, Look at this. Under me. Hey. Oh. <laughs> well, you can hear that, you can sense the humour that uh, Xbox has had. Uh, I'm now turning to John Green, who was a bantamweight. John, um, when did you start boxing? I was boxing at age seven years of age. I was, I was boxing. How many fights did you have as a bantamweight? Professional? Professional, I had 18 professional fights. Won 13, lost three drawn to. Would you see yourself as a scrapper, getting in there and getting tucked in, or a... Um, yeah, I was. I was a, I was a, I was a just natural born fighter. What do you do now? I don't do anything, only... Um, don't forward to see me grandchildren. I've got eight grandchildren. I'm only 47, but I've eight, great, eight grandchildren. Okay. And you've got a medical condition now, have you? Yeah, yeah. I've got a medical condition called um, punch drunk syndrome, which is which is where you, you you've got no memory. You you you've got no memory. Tell me something, Lee, as I come to you now, because this is about the changing consciousness show. It's the changing attitudes that people have. Last week I spoke about uh, how in the 60s we had the sexual revolution. Then so many things have changed. So I was speaking to people who were living in same-sex relationships. Um, how would you take that, Lee? Uh, same-sex relationships, is it part of your life? I don't mean part, but you are. <laughs> I'm not to say that. It's a spell on my name, isn't it? I don't know. Um, I, 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 I work with uh, some gay people. Uh, I have a problem with it. You know, I mean, it's not something, um, you know, that... Obviously, I mean, I, I can't really understand it because it's, it's not my preference. Like, but uh, yeah, I'd say I, I work with gay people. It's fine, just normal people, aren't they? I mean, it's, there's no difference really in my my eyes there. To be honest, there. Okay. Uh, any thoughts, Gavin, on same-sex relationships? Yes. Yeah, I don't really have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with it at all. It's just the way people are made out there. And then the you know, people are everybody's built differently. <coughs> Everybody's built differently, and, and, um, and people are entitled to do what they want. You know, if, uh, if one guy wants to live with another guy, it's, that's his choice. And same, same with uh, the females. You know, if they want to live with each other, it's up, it's up to them. No impact on, on anybody else. Either. 
because I, I believe we've got some uh, boxers, professional boxers who are gay. Yeah, I heard uh, yeah, the Puerto yeah, Rican guy. Yeah. Puerto Rican, yeah. So some guy over there has, has, has declared himself as being being a homosexual, and um, that doesn't really matter, really, does it? You know, um, I, I would like to box him. It is, uh, yes, mm. but attitudes have changed. Mm. Um, Jerry, you're a kind of old timer, maybe. Good what singer. About you? Good, very, very good singer. You're a good singer. Yeah, I'm not putting you on. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get your chance one day. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know, I'm su- surprised that you know you're talking about change with with, uh, with uh, homosexuality. You know, I mean, I was brought up in the, in the 70s and in, in late 70s, and I remember, you know, when I was just sort of coming to being a young man and going out pubs and all that sort of thing, and there was no gay people around in those days. There wasn't any gay people around, and uh, I mean, in them days, you seen one, you beat him up. Why I don't know, but that's just how it was in them days. And here that's we are. That's why they didn't tell you. That's yeah, why they didn't nobody. Come out. It's, a, it's just amazing that there was no gay people then. And as I say, if he did, fortunately, that you know where I used to come from, they beat you up. Well, you know, looking back at that, that's crazy. And then, but now, uh, gay people are everywhere. And so there must have been the same ratio of gay because it's a, a human thing. You know, it's how you was born. There must have been the same amount of gay people around in those days that is now but who, who wasn't coming out or maybe didn't know he was gay or whatever you know it's just bizarre really that but yeah so there, there is a big change now because um now i, think, I feel that it, it's readily accepted if somebody's gay it doesn't make any difference to, to anybody it certainly doesn't make any difference to me anyway and i wouldn't treat anybody differently just because it was homosexual is that do you think because of education we know a lot more now yeah, yeah i think so yeah I think there's an element of that, but there's, all, uh, there's also part of it is um, it's become more prevalent that, 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 that because the, the, you know, the people are openly gay, and it's just become more acceptable, hasn't it? You know? So maybe uh, people were, if you want, by nature, um, of a different sexual orientation to the heterosexual. <coughs> but because of the fear of being exposed, it was hidden. And maybe yeah. now uh, there's a bit more honesty around. Yeah, there's a lot more honesty. I mean, as I say, it's just, I mean, I, I, I'm around the city centre all the time, and, and so, you know, so you, you come, across, come across a lot of people socially and, and, and in business, and uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really give it a second thought. If somebody's gay, it doesn't make any difference to me whatsoever. I don't, I don't look at that person in a different, different way. I treat him exactly the same. Then everybody else do that without any 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 thought. I don't, I don't drive me one way. I don't try to to, to behave differently. I just treat him just the same. Okay. I'm going to conclude in a way, uh, in a way because I know we've all got to go to our different places um, because this is to do with education and honesty. Hmm. How honest are we with ourselves? I'm going to, uh, this is putting something straight out of the blue onto our thinking. And uh, Jerry, how honest are you with yourself? You mean my uh, what mean? Do you know the crap that's within you? Are you been, I'm, what I'm doing, I'm doing all right. You know what I mean? And, um, if there's a God up there, he might check me when I die. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I know me, uh, me foibles and I, I kind of deal with them and get on with it and, yeah, I'm aware of it. You know, stuff I kind of think about on a daily basis and, yeah, pretty honest, I think. Being, yeah. I'm, I'm quite outspoken, me. I, 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 if somebody looks crap, I tell them most of the time. So being honest is being truthful to yourself. It's a hard yeah. one, isn't it? Yeah, but no, but no I'm, I'm, I think I'm quite honest with myself. But I, I, I find it difficult to be any other way, really. You know, it's... You're not going to get in trouble for not being honest with yourself. Probably, you know, you can't tell yourself off, can you? So. John, any ideas? Yeah, I went, I went to the hairdressers the other day and I was looking at the wind, I was looking at the mirror, and my dad was staring back at me. Honestly, you know, that, that's how honest I was. He's dead now, but this is still. Um, he died in February. How I see myself is, I'm a good guy, I'm a good guy. And if, if I don't like you, I'll tell you I don't like you, I won't speak to you. But I'd say I'm just an honest guy, I'm an honest guy. Well, that's 
uh, that's the end of our conversations we've had. Uh, that was the lads from the Manchester Xboxes. And it's good to just listen to, to people because uh, everyone has something to say. It's quite interesting when it came to same-sex relationships there that uh, basically we can see how attitudes have changed even in the world about 50 years ago. Um, yeah, people who were called gay would have been beaten up. What a lot of nonsense because we didn't understand. Now we understand a bit more and we can realize that people... Um, are born that way. They're born, nature has made them um, in, in that they prefer same sex to heterosexual relationships. Uh, it's still frowned on in some places, but at the same time, um, it's getting to, 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 to be understood that that's a normal loving relationship. Um, and uh, it just shows you when you start listening to people on the streets, all of them have a certain amount of wisdom to give. And maybe the people on the top, instead of listening to them and actually trying to understand what the man, the woman on the ground level actually thinks, they live in a world of their own, and corruption uh, becomes a part where instead of looking after other people, they look after themselves. And one of the things we have learned from the conversations this evening is you need to be honest. We need to be honest with ourselves. If we are not honest with ourselves, we can't be honest with somebody else. If we cannot live and love ourselves, it's difficult to live other love and uh, to live, love other people. If we cannot forgive ourselves, then it is difficult to forgive other people. Uh, and uh, I hope that you have learned something from people who just go about their daily lives. We're going to listen to a uh, station jingle, and then we're going to listen to girls playing the violin, the flute, and the baran. It's an Irish group. I love Irish music. I hope you enjoy this too. And then after that, we're going to. I'm going to go straight run into it, uh, and the uh, it's Diana Carl. Firm, Fram, Source. Okay, so it's a station jingle. Girls playing violin, flute, and baran. And then Diana Crow. Firm, Fram, Source. CMR Critical Mass Radio is a completely non-profit station where the hosts pay to broadcast their shows. The mission of the station is to get as much information as possible out to people about the world we live in, to unite like-minded people and to try to come up with workable solutions. If you agree with the work that we are doing, then please feel free to help us continue by making a donation on the webpage. CMR is for people who want answers, because now it is our turn. That was great. I enjoyed it. I hope you did. Um, and um, we're going to come now to commercial spots because you're listening to um, the Changing Consciousness show on criticalmassradio.co.uk. And the uh, Critical Mass Time to Act conference. It's on the 24th of the 11th. 
Um, and this is mainly for those who live uh, around Manchester, Greater Manchester. But if you are listening uh, and uh, you're in a different part of the world, well, then log on to criticalmassradio.co.uk and you can see all that's going on. Uh, Time to Act Conference, uh, it's £20, and it's on Saturday the 24th of November from 11am to 9pm. Uh, where is it? I'm just trying to find out. Um, right, my eyes are dim, I cannot see. But uh, if you get onto the site, uh, you'll get the details from there. We're going to start to close the show down. If you've just joined us, we've uh, been doing a different kind of program this evening. We've been listening to voices from the streets. Uh, and that's voices of just people getting around doing their business. We first of all heard from Assad, Muslim uh, chap who lives in Bolton, runs the computer zone shop. And then uh, a group of young people who are uh, on their uh, gap year doing voluntary work for Zach's Farnworth. And then, of course, we concluded with quite a long interview with four uh, members of the Xboxers Association in Manchester meeting at the Derby Brewery Arms. It's getting late. And maybe it's uh, time for a hot cup of black coffee. Well, folks, we are coming towards the end of our time. Hope you've enjoyed the show. And uh, thank you for all those who um, helped out by giving their voices on my recording. And I hope I have done them justice. If you're listening in, thank you once again. Uh, thank you, world. Hope you have sweet dreams. May the wind or the breeze always be on your back. May the sun light up your face. May your God go with you, guide you through the night or through the day, through the year. And may you love yourself inside and love others on the outside. Be at peace with yourself and be at peace with them. I'm going to uh, leave off now with the doors, Riders on the Storm. So sweet dreams. Thank you for listening and love you all. Bye.